Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He's no soft serve, but gets in a McFlurry over frozen desserts. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day, ice cream lovers. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Really nice to have you here couple of things before we jump into the podcast hey we've hit a milestone we've had on our YouTube channel which is ice cream dot video over 12,000 views in the last 28 days which is pretty spectacular considering we are a specific podcast ice cream uh, focused uh, content driver so very much appreciate the love we get a lot of su- new subscribers every single day so please uh, subscribe to the podcast subscribe to the uh, videos on YouTube. I think you'll really find some value in it. There's a lot of content there that I think you'll enjoy. Secondly, is that uh, over the weekend, a very, very dear friend and uh, a mentor to the ice cream community, Dr. Arun Kalara passed away uh, as a result of uh, a very kind of rapid onset illness that you know we, we feel very sorry for his family. We, our love and uh, best wishes go out to, to his wife and family. Arun was uh, a real gentleman in the ice cream community. He built his reputation up as the uh, head of the food science department at Penn State for many, many years, and since then has been a regular contributor and teacher at the Penn State ice cream courses. So again, uh, thank you for all of the good memories, Arun. Uh, We'll be scooping up ice cream in your memory later on today. So thank you and uh, best wishes. Now, I do want to thank our episode sponsor, actually, which is Scoop School. Uh, no doubt if you've had a look at a lot of the different content here on the, on the uh, videos and on the podcast, you'll no doubt know that there's a lot of knowledge here that we can help you with, either start your business or grow your business. And we're getting a real international contingent of people subscribing to these videos and the podcast. So if you need help either establishing or growing a particular concept, or you've got a business that you'd like to kind of take to the next level, then reach out to us at Scoop School because we've got some really unique consulting packages that I think can help you. I think they're relatively uh, inexpensive so far as the value you get out of them. So have a look at scoopschool.com. I think you'll find that there's a lot of help there, particular help for your brand that we can do to help you, again, either open or grow your business. Now, today's podcast, we're talking about photographs on your menu boards. And we asked the question, should you have photographs on your menu board? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. Yes, you should have photographs on your menu board. You should have photographs on your wall. You should have photographs on your big screen TV. You should have photographs on the roof. Anywhere that you can put images, good high resolution images of your products, you should put them up there. People buy with their eyes. We all know that. When we go to a restaurant or any other food store, and we look at the menu, whether it's up on the board or whether it's up or or whether it's in a folder, turning the pages, our eyes are instantly drawn to the images. And another thing too that I do wanna stress is that when people come to an ice cream shop specifically, they haven't come there to read. And yet a lot of the ice cream stores that I visit and consult with, the first thing you do when you look at your menu boards is look at how much writing there is. I'm telling you, it's a real issue. Some of them, it's almost like reading War and Peace. And so you might have a a really good money generator down here in the bottom right hand corner of your menu board and yet the customer starts reading from the top left because that's where they always start and they read 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 and they get about halfway and they just go "Uh ah too much to read just give me a regular cone of vanilla and you're really missing out on marketing some of the really unique and uh, 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 proprietary products that you have on your menu board. So get rid of the writing and start putting some images on there. Now, how do you do that? A lot of people say, well, Steve, I really can't afford a food photographer. And these days you don't need a food photographer. Now, I don't know whether I would also suggest using your phone because you really need some good high resolution images that you can use for graphics on your menu board, but also as graphics on the side of your food truck or your bicycle or cart that you're taking out to the park or even just your Instagram posts. So here's the thing. When we had these menu boards done um, many, many years ago, 
I don't know photography. I don't. I know ice cream. I don't know photography. But there was a lady we went to church with, Christy Halverson, and I'm going to put a link to her website. She's based out of the Dallas area. Um, she was in St. Louis here for a long time. Uh, she knew photography but didn't know ice cream. So when we came together, we kind of brought that knowledge together. You don't need a food photographer to get some great images. You just know, you need someone that needs to know photography. And so, funny story, so she uh, sets up at the store and we have all of the ice cream products ready and basically we made everything on the menu. Everything that you see on the menu boards behind me, we made and well, I made, she photographed. And she had this kind of canvas white tent with lights on the outside. Um, it was all set up, really nice setup. And we started making all of these products and we got to the point where we were making this root beer float here. So I put the root beer in first, I gently put the scoop of ice cream in the top, put it in this white canvas container. She's taking pictures, and I'm thinking, ah, uh, it's just not right, just not right. No foam, there was no foam, right? So I take a straw and I, I, I swear to you, I just tapped this ice cream scoop, ding! And next thing, it's like Vesuvius. Everything's kind of flowing out of the cup. And she's saying, this is fantastic. She's taking pictures. Meanwhile, her white canvas tent is being destroyed with root beer soda and ice cream. And you know what? It was such a dramatic photograph that we put it on the menu board just because it drove interest. People would look at it and go, oh, wow, root beer float. Now, yes, we had one guy every month that used to say, oh, I'll have a root beer float, but I don't want one, I don't want one flowing out like that. <laughs> and it was hilarious. Uh, so I'm telling you right now, people buy with their eyes and some of the most driving uh, interesting products that you have are your Sundays, your unique products, your scoops, different flavors. Put them up on the menu board. Limit the amount of writing, enlarge the photographs, and I think you'll find that it will drive sales. Now, what I'd like you to do if you're in the business is take a step back and currently look at your menu boards. Do you have photographs on there? Yes or no? If no, then you need to really reorganize, redesign, and get them on there. If your photographs are small and you have a lot of writing, reduce the writing, put bigger photographs. When you go through the drive through at McDonald's, they don't have an explanation as to what's in a quarter pounder. It's just a large image of a quarter pounder. And if you want to know what's in the quarter pounder, sure, they'll tell you. But they've utilized their menu board space to its, to its premium or to its utmost because that's what drives sales. It's extremely important. This is valuable real estate up on this menu board here. You've got to be able to capitalize and capture your, your uh, customer's attention with images, even those that move on the uh, different types of television screens. I've seen stores that their actual images just kind of tilt every now and again to kind of create that movement. Again, people buy with their eyes. I think you know what I'm talking about. Have a look at your menu board. If you're not in the business and you're going around to different restaurants and food, uh, food places, Critique their menu boards to yourself. What would you do differently? What do you like? What don't you like? It's really important. Get that menu board up and running. Get some images on it. That menu board is the window to your store's soul. I'm telling you right now. Thank you for tuning in very much. Again, have a look at our uh, Scoop School consulting options, scoopschool.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.